not there so far this season. The Lobos have lost seven times already at home. Damian Walker, a clear path to the basket. He starts it with a dunk. Yeah, Utah came out a little bit of a trick defense and tried to trap the ball and left the man wide open. It was Walker. Walker averaging just under 13 points a game in the straight man-to-man -man defense now for New Mexico. Tony Harvey playing very well as of late, running the point for Rick Majerus, but not normally a point guard. Here's the man, Alex Jensen. The thing about Utah, though, is they've got a variety of guys that can get it in the basket. Jensen can play off all of them. Harvey can shoot the ball. Harvey over Henry. He's got it for three. Yeah, he was waiting. It looked like almost the entire time to get that look. He can stick it with range. They want him with more enthusiasm. So Tony Harvey, the senior out of Carson, California, in the junior college transfer, gets the Utes on the board. Here's Walker again, wide open for three. Not going to buy it this time, and Jensen clears. Utes will push it up. Jeff Johnson to the rack. Contact, no good. Altar can't get it to go. And here come the Lobos. So well, this is the way the Lobos want to play. Up tempo has always been with Fran for sure like. It's Jeremy Killian who is starting one on one with the Vermont Long. But there is the freshman Marlon Palmer, and he forced it that time. And I'm looking at Fran Fischello, and he said, let's think about what we're doing as you take a look at what happened the last meeting. Jensen with the huge game, but New Mexico. Long had only two points in the first half. They were 10 out of 14 from the line. But Utah hit 24 free throws in that game. That was a big part of the difference. Yeah, Utah got to the line. They're going to make solid basketball players out of you. Just like that, that charge taken. You've got to be prepared because they make back cuts, all kind of solid plays. Pretty backdoor cut. Harvey gets it back. Can't buy it. And the Lobos look to push again, but the Utes back on defense. Third meeting between these two schools. They've had some great ones in the past, including a buzzer beater two years ago. I was sitting right here and calling it with Mark Jones, and Royce only hit the three point shot to win at the buzzer. Well, they've, they've battled a lot through their career. Waylon White, extremely athletic, the one on one move, and fouled by Nate Alton. 13 of the last 16 going to Rick Majerus' club. Five in a row. And he has had a lot of success here in the pit, more than just about any other team coming in here playing on the road. <laughs> Rick Majerus has had a lot of success <laughs> everywhere. Rick Majerus is one of the outstanding coaches in basketball. Finds a way to get it done. As we see Waylon White bank one in, but Majerus, we watched him in shoot around, and I've known Rick Majerus since he was in Milwaukee when I was playing there. He is a basketball junkie, finds all kinds of time, and he takes a spin just to figure out little plays, nuances in plays, and now he brings it to this team. And the only questionable move in his career, he recruited me when he was at Marquette. <laughs> He's made up for it, though. So the Lobos with the one-point lead here. Well, the Lobos want to get off to a good start, because what they want to do is get the fans involved in the game as quickly as possible. All talk trying to post up Walker on the block. Johnson loses it. Here comes Henry. He's got a man to give it up. Oh, shit himself, and what a block by Jeremy Killian. One of the best athletes on the team went up to get that one. Henry thought he had a layup, and I thought they had numbers and could have had a two-on-one. Right here, just a chance to go take the ball. You see, just waiting on it is Killian knocking it out. How about the hops? He's only 5'11", but he's a fierce competitor. I mean, the worst he could have come out of that was a, would be a foul, and you don't let a man get a shot off you. Walker thought about it, gives it up. Here's Palmer, the freshman. This is badly. That's not going to be a foul. They're going to call all top, I believe, with the push on Walker. No, the so ball hit the rim. They're going to talk about it. It's a shot clock violation. That ball hit the rim. You don't think Fran will bring that up, do you? Oh, that's what he's saying. The ball hit the rim. Watch the change trajectory. See how that ball hit the rim. It, it definitely hit the rim. So Fran Frischella, who's always up anyway, one of the more demonstrative coaches on the sideline and emotional, He's going to get his money's worth right now, and he's right. He was absolutely right. He's begging for a timeout because he wants to do, he wants them to take a look to see if this hit the rim. Now that's not normally a rule. And that, that is, as you say, that is not normally something you can do in college. Yeah, that's not a reviewable play. 
You can look at it for free throw for, to make sure the right shooter is there in case of a fight. At the end of a game, you can make sure if they uh, got off before the shot clock. But watch it change directions. That's not even close. That ball hit the rim, and then Damian Walker chased it out. And really should have been a push on oh, Nate Altoff. Nate Altoff. So the officials, David Hall, Stanley Reynolds, and Bob Staffan are going to talk about it, but you can clearly see it glances the rim. And as you said, you can tell because it totally changed direction and tra trajectory. And if none of them, here's the problem, though. If none of them really saw it any differently, they almost have to accept what they had, and that's what they're doing. They've got to accept it because no one seemed to see it clearly hit the rim. And that is not our job. You cannot take a look at it in that situation. So Fran was right on the battle lost the war. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But it's still a one-point game. Utah's ball. Jensen posting up down low against White. Harvey's hit one already. Not this time. All talk the rebound. He's got it back. All talk knocked his old man down and the uh, New Mexico fans saw someone go down. They thought a foul should be called. Top field goal percentage in the conference. Nate Altoff at 61%. So 5-4 Utah leads. Lamont Long looking to go to work. Got a screen initially. Against Killian. Here comes Jeremy up the court. Mitchell's letting him play early on, and they're going to get Harvey with a walk. Yeah, he's had his mind made up almost every time he touched the ball. He wants to get it in the air. Needs to slow down a little bit. Well, and for Rick Majerus, the one thing that he will point out, and, and certainly it's obvious, they, they don't really have the true point guard, the, the Andre Miller, to run the show. Gary Colbert, a freshman of El Taloma, will come off the bench, play well for them, but they don't have that leader at home. Yeah, Terry, but you know, man, that point guard position is tough to fill. Now, Andre Miller is now having an outstanding year with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Brevin Knight, who's from Stanford and went down, is out. And Andre is, is doing a solid job. So those guys are hard to come by. All talk down low. With context, swiped away by Waylon White. That's goaltender. That's goaltender. Yeah, that's goaltender. Waylon White, the junior out of Milwaukee, has a 38-inch vertical. And he showed you how here. Well, he's got to use good judgment because all talk gets it. And the ball was going right over the rim, or at least it was going to the rim, and it's got to have a chance. No question about that one. Maybe plant a seed in the mind, though, of uh, Nate Altoff, but he's coming from the weak side. Yeah, Terry, and Altoff is not really an offensive-minded guy, so that can really disturb him a little bit. R.T. Gwynn now in. The freshman from right out of here in Albuquerque, Valley High School. Number 34 for New Mexico. Armour working up top. Came out of that when he came into a switch. Long's first shot of the game, no good. Had a good look. They let him get the ball, which is something Rick Majerus doesn't want Utah to do. Jensen, a wide open look for a three. He's not going to miss many of those. Well, so that's why you like to like Jensen. He does a lot of good things on the floor. Never in a hurry. Lets the game come to him. Second leading scorer for Utah right behind Hano Medela, who is still out with the injury, and the leading rebounder, and does so many other things for Rick Majerus. With a 10-4 lead now for Utah. One out of six so far for the Lobos. Here's Walker with the spin move blocked by Alta. Great help off the weak side. And Nate will trail a la Kareem. Well, they'll let him protect because he's really not going to shoot the ball so he can come and he can also be the last guy to swing it. There's Killian. Jetson with Gwynn on him. Loses it and that will go the other way. It'll be New Mexico ball as Alex Jetson forced the issue just a bit that time. 14-49. Utah up 10-4. Think the market's going to go up 20 percent next year? What are the tickets, folks? I'm out. I keep reading about tax-efficient investing. Should I be doing that? Anybody else seems. Mm, let's see. Rates are falling. Inflation's low. More stocks or more bonds. Hey, hey, hey! Oh man! Look at this investment strategies for you. Great. Just for me and five million other people. Thank you, Payne Weber.
Captain Jim McConnell and his crew are about to discover on Mars the origin of life on Earth. Somebody put that thing there, it's not us. That DNA looks human. And begin the greatest adventure of their lives. What are we here for if not to take chances? Mission to Mars, rated PG. Starts Friday, March 10th at a theater near you. Did you get them brakes at Pep Boys? Yeah, I did. I appreciate it. Pep Boys for quality parts and brake service from $69.99. No rebate necessary. Pep Boys. Cars like us. People love us. How do you enhance a V8 engine that produces 245 horsepower? A chassis that can haul up to 2,000 pounds. Or brakes that have four piston calipers? Simple. Add about six pounds of steel. Toyota Tundra, Motor Trend Truck of the Year, and four-wheel and off-road magazines, 4x4 four four of the year. NCAA Basketball presented by Payne Weber on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Payne Weber. Thank you, Payne Weber. And Toyota, go for it every day. Underground, but a mile high. The pit in Albuquerque. Fran Frischella taking over this year for Dave Bliss, the head of the New Mexico Lobo basketball team. They're down by six, and they've hit a dry spell as of late. Opened up the Damian Walker dunk less than a minute into the game. The first possession has not had a field goal since. Here's Artie Gwynn. They'll let him shoot from out there. Yeah, he's a the guy they really want on the inside. The way that uh, New Mexico played Utah last time they played was they spread it out and tried to beat him off the dribble, and Utah's doing a better job. They just collapsed in the middle. There's a guy who can take you off the dribble. Waylon White, he draws the foul on Phil Cohen, the sophomore who has just checked into the ball game for Rick Majerus. Majerus can keep coming at you with size. He can bring it out a lot of ways. It gives a chance to take Altoff off the floor if he needs to do that, give Jensen a little bit of break. If he does that, Killian has to be a little more active. Miss by White as you look at Roland Hanna, who had a very good ball game in the first matchup between these two. He's had seven starts on the year so far and playing well lately. Well, they've got to have somebody that they take RT going out because you need one of two things. You either got to find a way to get on the glass and get some putbacks or be able to give you something offensively or uh, defensively, help you with some blocks or something. They've got to get somebody to generate something. And Long has not been a factor oh, for two so far, and they haven't really been very good shots. But he's been well defended, too. Jeff Johnson, who sprained his ankle yesterday in practice and throws it away this time. Rowan White with a pick. Here he comes. White, coast to coast. Yes. Solid move, Terry, to get it into the paint. He came to a two-foot stop, so he would not get a charge. Doesn't take much to get these fans back into the ball game. They've been silent the last couple of minutes, not now. And the Lobos looking to pick it up on defense. Jensen for three misses badly. Here's Palmer. He was heavily recruited and recruited by Rick Majerus. Out of high school from Bourbon Bay, the same high school as Andre Miller. Rowan White along the baseline. He's got it over Cullen. Took a tough shot. But he, he seems to be able to beat you off the dribble, and he can jump over you if he has to. Well, just what you mentioned a moment ago, beating them off the dribble and that being the key in the first matchup, that's what they're going to now. That, that was probably their best opportunity. Oh, tipped away by Waylon White, and he thought that the Utah player got a piece of it. See, White right there, and then he just raised up. See, he actually created the contact. So when you do that, if you do it in the shooting motion, guys most likely are going to back away. When White was able to get it go down. You saw him point to his chest. They've just taken him out of the game because he needs to breathe it. Look what he's done in the last two games. Cullen from the corner. 4-3. <laughs> Phil Cullen, the sophomore, knocks it down. He's 6-9, and he goes out and knocks down a three-pointer. 
And that has been a trait of Rick Majerus's players throughout the years. There's Vermont Long, his first bucket of the game, and it's a three. It was a solid play, too. They ran him off the right, brought him back off a double screen behind the three. The leading scorer in the Mountain West Conference gets on the board. Cullen going closely to all <laughs> with the dunk. Forget about it. Oh, my goodness. Not only was it a dunk, it was a dunk with some emphasis on it. Like, let me get it in here. I'll break the rim. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Damian Walker allows him to catch it that low, it's over all day. Yeah, that's the real, you, you get it right on the head. You let a guy get anybody down that low, they can make a lot of good things happen. Turn around, fair play as Walker goes after Altoff, but he's called for a traveling violation. Well, obviously, they're going to let them play and play physically. But if you do, you've got to be able to use your physical self again. Get around. He tried to get around, and that was the mistake. And you see Altoff gets the ball and slams it. But you can't be trying to get it. If you're going to get him in the paint, you better get him soon. Altoff out top now. He doesn't really want to be up there. And look to score it. Good job helping on the pick by Long. Harvey with a screen. Solid defensive effort for the Lobos, but Jensen gets free, and the reverse, he can't get it. Second try to all talk, there it is. Well, it's just a, a huge size advantage that uh, you're facing when you're in New Mexico. They've got to block out. All talk doing all the work inside so far. And Fran Fraschilla will talk about it. The six-point lead for the Utah Utes when New Mexico looked like they were making a run. Starting to feel a little cramped by your present surroundings? Maybe it's time to expand your horizons. Maybe it's time to think about Remax. Remax Associates lead the real estate industry, averaging more experience and more sales than other real estate agents. Remax can help you find a new home that meets all your needs while selling your current house to someone who'll find it absolutely perfect. If you're looking for results, look for Remax. Nobody sells more real estate. very large and it spins very fast every once in a while however something unusual happens we slow down we come together and that is when the earth really starts spinning that's why we are doing what we can to make it easier for the human race to stay united America's finest skaters in a one-of-a-kind ABC sports event. No rules, no judges, just skating. The Chevrolet Skating Spectacular, Sunday at 1 on ABC. Welcome back to ABC's NCAA Basketball, presented by Payne Weber, and we'll take a look at what the Utes are used to doing. Well, they're being active. You're right here, Jensen misses a shot, but he tips it again, and we said he'd stay active. You see Nate Altoff being active there, picking up one of his four offensive rebounds. Right there, you take a look at what Utah does when they help rebound their opponents. 42 consecutive conference games. And Altoff right now, four out of six, eight points and five rebounds. And coming in, we knew they had the edge in the paint, and it's paying off right now. Waylon White with a move. Rising high. They're getting up very high. We were talking about Altoff. Altoff has four offensive rebounds, five total. New Mexico has just four rebounds, period. Waylon White carrying the load. He's got eight points for the Lobo so far. So a four-point game with just under 11 minutes left there in the first half. Gwynn just threw Altoff to the floor and no whistle. 
I think if you play all tough, that's what you probably have to do. Be as aggressive as you can. Hardy with the pull up on the baseline, a little bit long. And a new shot clock. You know what Utah does well, Terry? Utah does a good job not letting you block them out. If you, when they, the shot's going up, they don't stand still. And getting a hand on the ball. Jensen just tipping that, keeping it alive, and get the new clock. Yeah, they'll take a chance that they can chase it down. And White took <laughs> Jensen down that time. I suggest you do all of those hard takedowns. Some of those are <laughs> Academy Award performances. Bill Cullen deep off the glass. Tim White took the rebound. Here comes the sophomore out of Texas. Long for three. Yes. His second three-pointer of the afternoon, and the long ball may be heating up here. He did a good job of finding him on the open. The crowd up and very loud. Jensen wants it on the block against White, can't get it. Jeremy Killian back up top, a deep three for Jensen straight away. Set for everyone was standing up, he said, everybody in here, down. Gave us a chance to get a good look after Jensen drilled that three. Alex Jensen, two out of three from three-point range and six points so far. And he did get very quiet. <laughs> Is there anything more fun than being on the road as a player and making people sit down? There's the long long with an air ball. He's trying to say that ball was partially tipped. It was a tough shot. He's fading back on the three-pointer. So it's a four-point lead for Utah. Long, though, besides the air ball. Two out of three now from three-point range. Oh. It's okay. It's only a Corolla. Move it up! The 2000 Corolla. Now with a VVTI engine. It's more powerful than you think. What? We're here in South Central Los Angeles, and we're building a children's playground. And 150 people from Home People came out today. All these folks from the Team Depot Associates are volunteers out here today. They're not being paid. This is a day off. And we're all glad to be here. The kids of a place called Home are so excited. The playground is going to be great and wonderful for our kids in the community. It's going to be somewhere safe. There's jungle gyms, swings, monkey bars, slides. It's a kid's dream. My daughter will have a lot of fun, and other kids in our community will, too. Got any books I might like? What did you have in mind? Homer's Odyssey in the original 5th century Greek. Attic, Doric, or Ionic dialect. How's that possible? I have every edition of every book ever published in every language. Could your business use the bandwidth to change everything? Ride the light. Quest. Freedom. Control. What a ride. Just you and your laptop. Log on to autobytel.com for dealer cost info, reviews, and a low, no haggle price. It's a hassle free trip. Autobytel.com, the road to your next car. Tim Allen, Piranha, returns to ABC in the wildest network premiere movie. Jungle to Jungle, ABC Sunday at 7, 6 Central. Back in Albuquerque, earlier today, Rick Majerus gave us an update on the status of Hano Metal, who's out with the injury. He has ligament damage in his left arm, and he can't, doesn't have full range of motion at all, and he can't hold the ball. So, you know, uh, I don't want to take away his hope. Uh, you know, I doubt that he'd be able to play Monday, but, you know, I don't want to say that definitively because... I never thought he'd come up off the floor in the Air Force game when he injured him. And Monday, that huge matchup with UNLV just behind Utah in the standings in the Mountain West. And catch that over on ESPN, the midnight Eastern game on Big Monday. But Hano Medela, you, know, you talk to him during practice, you watch him. He's so active on the sideline all the time. You know 
that it's just killing him not being able to go out there and compete right now. Oh, and it has to be killing him. I had the injury he's had. I'm frankly surprised he was able to play it all in the Air Force game. For those people who ever had it, it's like skier stun, and it keeps the thumb from moving away too far from the rest of the fingers. And, and Rick Majerus has talked about it. He's got a great pain threshold because uh, Hannah Madeline. Here's Mike Pusey who just checked into the game. Welcome to the game. As the shot clock is down to 2.9, the Utes using up much of the shot clock the last couple of possessions. In fact, possession to go, they used up 50 seconds with the new shot clock. Yeah, they, they've used up a lot of time, but they, you know, they've been able to get some defense played against them. You know, Terry, the other thing we were talking about with Hannah Madeline. Two seconds to get this shot off. Harvey does. Can't buy it, though. Rick Majerus was talking about the fact, and you heard it too, that someone said that Rick just wouldn't play. There's no chance. This guy loves the play. Tim Lightfoot for three. R.T. Grimm with the follow. Uh -huh. And Fusey comes down with it as he wrestles it away from Gwynn, and they'll whistle Gwynn for the foul. Well, Gwynn, Gwynn made a great effort, and I'm looking at Fran Priscilla, who's giving him the right thing. you got to applaud the effort. He just couldn't get his feet under him again to be able to explode to the basket. He comes up out of nowhere almost to get this rebound. I mean, just watch. Tough rebound, and he tries to make a play that isn't there and then gets fouled on the other side. Jeff Johnson forced it along the baseline. Here come the Lobos. Marlon Palmer, the lob, right, yeah! He's in double digits now with 10. If you allow New Mexico to make athletic plays, or if Utah does, they'll find it tough to beat him here. And they'll call the block. R.T. Gwynn, who seemed to have been there. It will not be a shooting foul, so Utah basketball when we come back. Dad wouldn't have called this retirement. I mean, who would have thought? When did I get to retire from managing my money? Now that I have four trustees, seven grandkids. Kind of funny how investing was easier when I didn't have any money. Titanium bikes are overrated. I always thought earning money was the hard part. Keeping it's the real job. Mm. I wonder, should we take the income? Should we reinvest? Thank you, Payne Weber. Zero pressure Michelin. So revolutionary it won't go flat. Even with the puncture the size of a golf ball. Letting you drive up to 50 miles at 55 miles per hour. Just what you'd expect from Michelin. Mom, Dad, if I'm paying rent, I gotta have a better breakfast than this. Mark. I know there's some dietary restrictions at the table, but no way. What would you like, Mark? Potatoes, sausage. Eggs. Would you like me to serve that to you in a nice warm skillet? <laughs> that would be great. What does this look like? A holiday inn? <laughs> Want a better breakfast? Try our award-winning best for breakfast menu in today's Holiday Inn. Did you know the half million dollar answer? You're right! Stephanie Girardi did and walked away a winner. Catch an all-new Who Wants to Be a Millionaire tomorrow at 9, 8 central on ABC. John Saunders in our ABC studios, Colorado and Iowa State going to overtime. Iowa State had won 19 of 20, including a win at Kansas on Thursday in the OT. Jack White Walls knocking down the jumper, and Colorado pulls off the upset. 102 to 90 is the final. Right now, back to Terry and Quinn. 
So a shocker out of the Big 12 here in the pit, a two-point game. Utah with the lead, 7:44 left in the first half. Charge or block? You make the call. Well, you got right there. You take a look. It is a tough call to make. The question is whether or not Gwynn has established himself. This angle says not quite. So the officials make a tough call because it's a bang-bang call and a very difficult one to get sometimes. But I don't know if that's as much a problem as the Lobos are facing a 15 to 7 deficit, you know, in terms of rebounding. And that's causing as much problem as anything else. They, they're hustling. Jeremy Killian gets it to go in the foul on Waylon White. So they'll count the bucket and Killian to the line. Well, that, that's a momentum stopper there. I mean, White, see, White lost his footing and tried to come back. Killian did a good job going back a little bit until the defender, White. Killian, the senior, a transfer from Palomar Junior College. He's originally from San Diego and misses the free throw. Not long. Takes a rest on the bench. Rest assured he will not be there long. No pun intended. <laughs> I think they just got Killian for a foul. And right in front of Rick Majerus, where you don't want to commit a, a turnover, make a mistake, or commit a foul. For the first time, Killian. Only 14 fouls on New Mexico and three on Utah. And then a whole lot of whistles. Here's Kevin Henry. Deep corner, can't get it. And oh, wait, they'll decide it's going to stay right here, New Mexico basketball. Henry's a shooter. He's a three-point shooter. He can knock down that shot. They need somebody else to come alive to carry through most of the game. So long in the court, long run, could be the guy makes some big scores late. There you go. We got plenty of them, folks. <laughs> it's Marlon Palmer, the freshman, running the show right now. For get, Frank Michelle. He gets a senior heart. Up to Roland Hanna. Palmer going to work. That's one thing he can do very well. And he takes Tony Harvey on the dribble and draws the foul. As you mentioned, when they spread the floor, New Mexico, they've got a lot of quickness, a lot of one-on-one -on -one players who can certainly draw the foul or get the bucket. Well, when we talk to Fran Fischilla, that's what he talked about. But the other thing to take into consideration, if a team denies, that means they give you angles where you can do that. And it's, it's smart of you if you try to get to the basket create an opportunity for yourself or your teammate. Four-point lead for Utah. It's long back in, gives it low to Walker, spins. Offensive. And they're going to go the other way. Well, it wasn't even close because he never got Posey to go the other way. I mean, you got to get him going in another direction. Second foul on Damian Walker. Watch Pusey draw it. Yeah, see, he's there. He, he never, because if he'd got him to go to the middle, he's got a chance to get his shoulder on the other side. He put it right into his chest. Killing it against Henry. Using his speed and a little bit of that strength. And he's going to draw the foul on Kevin Henry. So the first foul on Henry, the junior out of Denton, Texas. Great regional action coming your way tomorrow on ABC. You'll either get this game, number one Cincinnati, and Kenyon Martin. Will it be an upset <laughs> against Temple showing those guns? And a top 25 matchup, Oklahoma taking on Kansas. ABC's NCAA basketball presented by Hayden Weber tomorrow right here. Not many people are arguing, arguing if, you, if Temple leaves Cincinnati at that number one spot by not beating them. The guy that probably will be player of the year will have to be Kenyon Martin. I mean, he's one guy that just dominates the game and does it more on the defensive end than anybody has in a long time. And when you look at the top ten, and they were talking about it, Brent and Dick Vitale, earlier today with the Duke game against NC State, that's the one thing Cincinnati really has against, against Duke and most of the top teams, that inside presence. They are so physical. Yeah, they're very physical. They're moving the better Cincinnati is offensively, but I still wouldn't take anything away from Duke. A lot of contact, no call, Quinn. And the double dribble now on Alex Jensen. It is it's a physical game. It's become quite physical. <laughs> there, I mean, that banging body's in there. I mean, right here, you see, going to the basket might have been an opportunity to call something there. They don't. <laughs> something. So, so I think you, you said it right. It's physical. They're, they're just going to let them play. The Utes with the six-point lead now. Henry, 4-3. Kevin Henry. 
His first three-pointer, he's got 43 on the year. Can stroke the three. Some good young players for Fran Fischella here in Albuquerque, and it's a three-point game now. Kevin Henry, by the way, did not attempt a three-pointer in the first matchup against Utah. There's a 12-point victory for the Utes. Harvey in a lot of contact. They're going to call the block, and that's a good call on Marlon Farmer, even though he's going to disagree. The seventh team fall on New Mexico now. This is I don't think this is even close. That's a good call. I mean, he doesn't have position. You could see that it's turned the corner. Harvey still had his shoulder out in front. And once you do that and you make some contact, that's what the freshman has got to learn. You've got to get your body in front by using your feet. Waylon White back in. As Palmer takes a seat, they'll do a little teaching on the sideline. And Tony Harvey goes to the line. Can't buy it. See, with, with Palmer sitting down, this puts Lamont Long on the ball again. So Henry is the guy that they got to look for. Here's White in the lane, the spin over Johnson draws the contact, and they will get the whistle. But they got the whistle because White is such a good athlete. Because he makes a spin and he put the ball up, and then the foul came, and then he put it, pulled it down, and went up again. And the official almost has to call that. And no one questions the ability of Waylon White, the junior out of Milwaukee, and the transfer from Iowa Western Community College. But he's had trouble staying in games. The foul trouble, something that he has been plagued with throughout the season. Well, the that, you know, Terry, the transition from junior college to, to a tough physical conference is this is, is when you play like they, they play today. He's fouled out, I don't know, about five games. Had the foul trouble the other night against BYU, which was Thursday night, by the way, as White gets it to go, and it's a one-point game. New Mexico had to come back, didn't get back home until noon yesterday. A little bit of a practice, but that's about it to get ready for this one. Whereas Utah has been in town for about a day and a half. All tough, down low. They're going to call it a charge. But, uh, they're going to count the basket. We'll wait and see. They wipe it off. Yeah, they must have wiped it off. All tough gets it on the block. You see right there, no question about it. Solid position. But Nate All tough sitting right behind Rick Majerus. That's his second foul. He was the dominant force early in the game. The first six or seven minutes of this one, he carried Utah. Long, swiped away by Killian again. <laughs> Jeremy Killian at 5'11", just swatting everything today. I like his competitive fire, though. You know, it's, not, it's like nothing is, a, is taken for granted. If you put it in my face or I get close to it, I'm going to try to make a play. Five-minute mark until halftime in a one-point game here. Always seems to be a good one when these two hook up, especially here in the pit. Lamont Long, one-on-one, -on -one, spins on Harvey, left hand up. Uh -uh. Made a solid move. You've got to finish, though. See if Utah takes him off the clock here. Nope. Killian for three. Johnson, the rebound, can't hold it. Scramble. New Mexico ball. Long well, going to bring it back up. The 6'4", 190-pound senior who declared for the NBA draft after last season and then came back to New Mexico. And may have made the best decision of his professional career. Yep. Was going to announce that he was going to the uh, uh, NBA and at that press conference decided he wasn't going to go. A really good decision. Kevin Henry over Cullen who got a piece of it. And it was way short. Good read by Cullen because Henry had come free and Cullen's man had set the pick the frame. Not much going on for Utah as of late either. And Jeremy Killian spins one out. The Lamont Long will slow the tempo a bit, and that's been a big word around here the last couple of games. Whether or not Fran Fraschella is going to push it up the entire game, bring it back out, slow the tempo down. I don't think that's something you've got to play by ear, but you got to remember, Fran Fraschella is new. He's putting a brand new style of play in here, so some of the guys aren't quite familiar with it. One point game here in Albuquerque. We'll be back.
Let's see. College in four years. Costs up 40% over the next five. Somebody do the math here. It'd be great Please if our money would grow as fast as these kids. I can't believe it. Will paying for college be as painful as this? It's getting ready. Hey, that kid just dropped a pretzel? Because I like pretzels. I really Glenn like will pretzels. be able to help with our education. I wonder if we should have put that money in a trust. Maybe we would have... I hope she was kidding about college in Hawaii. Thank you, Payne Weber. Great, Mom. Pizza every day. That's what I was afraid of. Oh, it's not what you had in college, Mom. It's Papa John's. But you need variety. Variety? That's Papa's choice. You get five toppings for $9.99. What about your veggies? Their veggies are great, especially the fresh baby portobello mushrooms. Order Papa's Choice, a large pizza with your choice of five toppings for a meager $9.99. I'm living better than I ever did at home. I wouldn't say that. Miss Johnson. Miss Johnson, it's time for your massage, Miss Johnson. Solara. An entirely different kind of Camry. It's for you. America's finest skaters in a one-of-a-kind ABC sports event. No rules, no judges, just skating. The Chevrolet Skating Spectacular, Sunday at 1 on ABC. Terry Gannon, Quinn Buckner back with you here in Albuquerque. A one-point lead for Utah. It has been over four minutes since the Utes scored. Well, that's because they were having a tough time getting Alex Jensen in the game. You see him pulling out all stops out of the Lobos. Very physical game. Jensen is accustomed to playing. He gets back up. He keeps playing, but just having a tough time getting free. He's two of three from the three-point line. He's six points, three rebounds, and that's the reason he hadn't been much, very effective. You see the first game, 26 and 12 so far here today. Six and three with 3.31 to go in the first half. Last field goal was at the 7.41 mark. We are at 3.25 and counting now. Jensen going to work baseline. Kick it back. Sharp looked at it. Adam Sharp just came into the game. The drive, the finger roll, and he's got it. Good Adam job. Sharp, the sophomore. Good recognition by Sharp, because they didn't cover him. Sharp obviously doesn't feel comfortable taking jump shots, so he penetrated to the middle. Damian Walker posting up strong on Phil Cullen, who is late getting there, and will be whistled for the foul. It was Walker who established things early on for New Mexico. The first two possessions, in fact, opened up with a wide-open slam dunk. Well, they, they, and they're taking Cullen out of the game. because Cullen isn't quite strong enough and doesn't really understand, I think, defensively the things that he has to do to keep Walker from getting position. Walker held him off. And without Hano Medela in the lineup, that's what Rick Majerus has. He's got the height, but he really doesn't have the strength inside besides Altoff and perhaps Jensen. Look at Hano. Yeah, yeah, you take a look at Hano. The other thing that you lose there is tremendous experience. Yeah. I mean, first of all, Hano's about 24 years old, which helps because, you know, he went to a mission. But Damian Walker is, is he transferred from TCU. So he's got that kind of, not man versus boy, but he is a very confident player with tremendous experience. He's a freshman All-America at TCU his first year there. One-point game again. Jeff Johnson kicks it out. Jensen behind the line and he gets the three. His third of the afternoon. White got caught looking and Johnson, uh, Jensen standing waiting for the ball. Nine points now on three for four from three-point range for Alex Jensen. Here goes Long. Out of control. Throws it away. Harvey up top against White to hang and he gets it and contact no call. Well he created the contact but he did a good thing. He put the ball in White's face so White couldn't get his arms up. Tony Harvey with five on the afternoon and all of a sudden it's a six point lead. Nolan Hanna as Jensen stays in the lane he won't guard him out there. No, he's just when they do that he's like a one man zone. 
White to the baseline blocked by Johnson, but I believe they're going to get Mike Pusey with the body first. Don't forget, coming up in just two minutes and five seconds, the Autobytel.com halftime report. John Saunders and Digger Phelps give you all the day's scores and highlights, including Cal and number two Stanford. And of course, Duke, another win on the road in the ACC. Even though NC State made a run <laughs> late in that game. I got to get that in. Right? The alma mater of my partner here. <laughs> got to give him a plug. They've been playing well. I did the game where they played against Purdue, North Carolina State, and they beat Purdue at, uh, at Purdue. No, uh, Herb Syndic has done a, a really good job there. And in danger, though, of not making the tournament once again with uh, the loss this afternoon in the last week and a half. They have not been playing well. So. Need to turn things around in Raleigh. Well, ACC is, I don't have to tell you how difficult it is. And one, you go around to round ones, and people figure out what you like the second time through. Even though only two top 25 teams this year in the ACC, but it is. It's a war wherever you go. There, Big Ten, Big 12. Tony Harvey, the miss, but the follow by Pusey. All alone underneath. The block out is not there. The shot goes up. You block out until the ball is in your hands. And that time it ended up in Utah's hand. That was a pretty critical basket, I think. And that's why the timeout's here. Because now you've got an eight-point difference with a minute 34, making this a big possession. And Fran Fraschella burns his second timeout of the game. This is the largest lead so far by Utah. So a minute 34 left until halftime. And we told you all about the pit as we came on. I've got a few memories of the pit. You got a few? One of the great games in college basketball. Who's that <laughs> running around? Jimmy V, God bless him. Yeah, what a great time it is to come back here every time. I'll tell you what, I miss that man every day. Oh, I'm sure. You know? Because of that energy. I mean, he's got that, that, that he was so vibrant. And he, but he helped you guys just understand about life as much as anything. And that's what I appreciate about him. Well, you know what he did, Quinn? He, he tackled so much in life outside of basketball. He's a great example to his players. And he caught a lot of flack for it, too. I mean, a lot of, a lot of sports writers didn't like the fact that he did TV and did all those things. But uh, it, no one was more fun to play for than Jim Valvano. Wait a minute. Who is that on the left? Who is that guy? The mass marauder? <laughs> Jim Valvano. <laughs> hey, Chris Corciani, Vinny yep. Del Negro, he's made a pretty good living in the uh, NBA. Yes. Yeah. My third trip back to the pit since that game, and uh, what was it? Always like? sweet. I mean, what, 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 I, I, you know, well, you know. No, but I haven't done it quite like that. I mean, think about that. You're at one point thinking you're not. You're out of the game. You know what my first thought was? The '69 Mets. <laughs> I was, I, that was my first thought. We're going to go down as another team right alongside the 69 minutes. You got to believe. You know a question. You got to believe. That's why you don't ever quit. The turnover by New Mexico, and they're in danger here of having a fine effort in the first half. Go for naught. An eight point lead for Utah with a minute 20 left until the break. And they get Pusey with the walk out top. The tenth turnover in the first half for Utah. New Mexico has turned it over seven times. New Mexico, I agree with you. She kept trying to, they need to capitalize on this one. Get this thing. They got to get back in touch. They're in, they're in danger of losing touch. Here. And here's their leader, Lamont Long. If they're going to go for a bucket here, he's the guy that's going to lead them. He has not been real active offensively, and you got to credit much of that to Utah. The other part of it is Palmer, their point guard, he, though he's a freshman, is out. So Long has to keep the ball in his hand. He's not quite as effective that way. He's better catching it and making it move. Gives it up to Henry, a deep three in. All that. Kevin Henry, and an important three for New Mexico. And yeah, now you feel the fans get back in a little bit more. There is a difference in the game clock and the shot clock. So New Mexico will get the ball back. 17 on the shot clock. Killian, stripped by Henry, and they'll keep it right here. Boy, that, that was a tough play. I didn't agree with the fans a little bit. First of all, he walked, and then second of all, I thought the ball went off his leg. Adam Sharp is going to check in for Utah, but we've got a break in the action first. As long goes back, and Rick Majerus has a word or two for the officials and his players. Well, he wants to tell us, the thing that he wants to tell his players, first of all, their spacing has gotten bad, Terry. They used to have lanes they could drive and cut 
and do things of that nature, but they don't have them anymore. So Majerus Burns his first time out and tomorrow coming up right here on ABC the Chevrolet skating spectacular the top performers from last week's U.S. figure skating championships including Michelle Kwan, Sarah Hughes, Michael Weiss. I know that's Quinn's favorite the two time U.S. champion tomorrow four Eastern one Pacific right here on ABC. No judges no rules just entertainment. But you know when I marvel at like that move he just made? I mean, I used to ice skate. I didn't figure skate like these guys. Did you ever get the backflip going on? Ah, please. I have had trouble skating backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but you could skate backwards. That's <laughs> just a bit. I like that. 22.8. Nine seconds on the shot clock for Utah here. Jeremy Killian one-on-one -on -one with Henry. Takes him all the way down, changes his shot, and misses. Walker with the rebound, and out to Lamont Long. They've got 14 to go here. I look at right here with Long. He's in a tough spot. Killian, I think, are defending. I'm Long. I'm going to try to take it. Can they get a bucket before the half? Long off balance. He gets it to go. Adam Sharp bringing it up. This one won't count no matter what. So Lamont Long with an important twisting move in the lane, and it's a three-point lead for Utah. One of Vitale.com halftime report comes up with John and Digger from the studio next. NCAA basketball presented by Payne Weber on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Papa John's Pizza, better ingredients, better pizza, and Bex, a beer apart. We'll return with the Autobytel.com halftime report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This halftime report brought to you by Autobytel.com, the road to your next car. Stay tuned for the second half after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Freedom. Control. What a ride. Just you and your laptop. Log on to Autobytel.com. For dealer cost info, reviews, and a low, no-haggle price. It's a hassle-free trip. Autobytel.com. The road to your next car. Mom, Dad, a 37-year-old that lives at home should pay rent. It's great, oh, Mark. But I want airline miles. Mm -hmm. Or points. I don't understand. My rent would earn me airline miles. Mm -hmm. And with points, I could upgrade to, like, grandma's room. Right? Like, like a rewards program. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, what does this look like, a holiday inn? <laughs> More ways to collect and redeem points than any other hotel program. That's today's Holiday Inn. A network premiere. I am your son. <laughs> Give me $2 million, or you'll never see him again. Sean! They kidnapped his child. This is your ransom. That was their first mistake. I'm offering this money as a reward on your head. Mel Gibson. I don't get my son back. I'm going to dedicate my life to tracking you down. Rene Russo. I want to talk! You kill him! You kill yourself! Hello! Ah! Give me back my son! Ransom. ABC Monday at 8, 7 central. Parental discretion advised. High performance just took a turn in the right direction. The all-new 2000 Lincoln LS with traction control. It automatically knows when it's slippery and helps you keep going, no matter what's down the road. The all-new, all-season Lincoln LS. Motor Trend's Car of the Year at your Lincoln dealer. R.C. Willie now brings you our most popular mattress sale of the year, R.C. Willie's Top 10. Get a free bed frame, box springs, premium mattress, fitted sheet, top sheet, two deluxe pillows, two pillowcases, free five-year extended warranty, and free setup and removal of your old mattress. All this, any size, any model of mattress set, on sale for $4.99 or above. Choose from Simmons, Sealy, or Spring Air, and with any purchase, take home a cherry or apple pie free. Saturday and Monday, come in for a slice of free pie and ice cream. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Nobody. We've made it easier to separate yourself from the crowd with a new Dodge Neon, loaded with more features, more total interior room, and more fun than ever before. Right now, Neon offers low financing, 
or a generous cash allowance to use toward your down payment. In a perfect world, everything would be different. Until then, see the friendly Dodge dealer near you during our Think Spring event. You're watching for Utah Digital 40 and ABC. Back at the pit in Albuquerque, ABC's NCAA basketball presented by Payne Weber. Terry Gannon, Quinn Buckner as the second half is already underway. Utah with a 35-30 lead over New Mexico as Alex Jensen misses down low. The scramble underneath and New Mexico comes up with the ball, but Waylon White stepped on the end line. The opening moment of this second half, Tony Harvey hit a short jumper to give Utah the five-point lead. The first half stats, there they are. Yeah, the thing that you take a look at is that for the rebounds, they're just Utah just dominating the glass. That's the most noticeable thing. And I think that's the problem that uh, you're going to have when you're in New Mexico. As you see the shot knocked down by Alcock. You know, they lost Kenny Thomas. And the problem they had, even when they lost to Wyoming, was the fact that they didn't have a rebound. Right here, Palmer had to take a timeout because his teammates left him stranded. There was no one there. He was the lone man in the backcourt taking the ball out for New Mexico. So Fran Frischella, that is the third time out that he has had to take in this game. You don't want to take one like that. No, especially, I mean, it, not, not even a full minute, basically, it's gotten off the clock, so you definitely don't want to do that just a little over a minute. But that's just not being prepared coming out at halftime. Well, as we got underway in the first half, it was the inside presence of Nate Altoff that got Utah on the board early. Yeah, he got aggressive. He got the ball. He's got size. He's 6'11". Nobody's quite as big as he is. You see him come get that block. Inside position gets a slam. So all the inside play that was really dominated by Utah was primarily on Nate Altoff's back. And remember, Hannah Matler's not on the floor, so it gives him a little bit more room, but he's picking up the slot with Madela on the bench with his injury. I'll talk the leading scorer right now with 10 points. Jensen has nine for Rick Majerus's club. So a seven-point lead for Utah. Lamont Long trying to get things going here. He had six in the first half. He's got eight overall right now. Remember, in the first matchup, he had 16 of his 18 points against Utah in the second half. White loses control. But Palmer comes up with it and the easy deuce. Yeah, because the Utah Utes came over to help, and the ball just kind of laid there for Palmer to pick it up. His first field goal of the afternoon, the freshman out of L.A. Jensen over White. Can't get it. No one there for Utah. Did Frank Fischel will try to pick up the pace a little bit here in the second half? Well, the, the, only, the real problem he has, he can't go as deep. So if he starts running, he's going to, and he used up a timeout, as you pointed out here, so he doesn't have the opportunity to rest these guys if he starts running. And you've got to get it off the glass first if you're going to run. Armor the lob to White. Is that oh. you guys that have just made some eye contact or what? Great pass from Palmer to Waylon White. White had an outstanding first half, made all four of his shots at 12 points. And I'll get this building jumping. Jensen, Michelle thought it was a walk, no call, and he's going to draw the foul. Waylon White picks up his second. But you've got to be able to make contact. See, he'll make it look like a shot, and everybody just change, turns their head with the exception of White standing there waiting for it, puts the ball in, 14 points, five or six from the field. Waylon White having a whale of a game. <laughs> <laughs> and it's no surprise, though. And that is something that New Mexico has done throughout the year. The backdoor cuts and off the basketball, the quickness of guys like Waylon White, Damian Walker, they look for that lob. Yeah, they do. They look for it. And, you know, a lot of teams are starting to do this where you act as though you're shooting because players freeze momentarily when that happens. And if the guy can see if going long or short, he can take advantage. Alex Jensen, who had 26 in the first matchup, a career high between these two, gives Utah a five-point lead now, and Jensen the leading score for Utah with 11. Damian Walker. Gives it to Lamont Long, guarded by Jeff Johnson now. Did a good job with Johnson just staying with him. Walker against Altoff, uses the body and gets it to go. And well, they picked up his third foul. Walker did a good job establishing position to get Altoff in position that he had to foul. Ball gets slid, gets slid inside. Now watch him kind of go in. He goes up inside a little bit. The official might have been able to call that offensive. 
because he created the contact. They had to take the 6'11 off off the floor. And in comes Mike Pusey, a 6'8 freshman out of the state of Utah. Altoff with the size advantage, but Damian Walker with the quickness. And, and a little bit of savvy, too, because that was a savvy play. Knowing when to go after the big guy. Tony Harvey going to pull up for three. Cleared by Long. Here come the Lobos on the run. When he's open. Thought about it. Goes by Alex Jensen. And they'll call Jensen for the foul in the deep corner. Because Henry's made two threes. Made a couple jump shots. Jensen had to go try to cover him. Kevin Henry, the junior out of Denton, Texas, in the six career games against Utah coming in. He was only four out of 13 from three-point range and did not have one in the first matchup. But he's done some damage today. Two out of three from behind the arc. Walker. Jensen late getting there. Utah rebound. Mexico's done a nice job getting back on defense. Well, the Mexico will get back on defense. I think it was good as defense New Mexico's played in transition. So is Utah. Jensen right by White to the rack. And there's a look at why Alex oh. Jensen is so good. He does so many things. That's a big-time play because he pulled up and shot a little floater with a guy waiting to take the charge. Beats you from beyond the arc. Takes you inside on the drive. Goes to the boards. Just battles. And an honor roll student to boot. About his teammate Hannah Madela about to graduate summa cum laude. How about that? I know you were you had that going on too. That's why you sat there. You looked at me like, hey, that's nothing. <laughs> Very impressive, Quinn. <laughs> the dunk by Walker off the dish by Palmer. It's a two-point game, and the Lobos with the momentum now. Listen to this crowd. Johnson may have walked that away, but threw it away. Here comes Waylon White. Smart play. He was about to mishandle it, and the freshman's got to bring the ball back out. And Fran Fischilla was saying, if you don't have numbers, you don't have to force the issue here. Fran Fischilla sets up a play. I'm not sure that was it. The deep three by Palmer. Lost out of bounds, but it's Utah basketball. The Utes will have it when we come back, but it has been awfully loud the last two minutes inside the pit. My dad wouldn't have called this retirement. I mean, who would have When do I get to retire from managing my money? Now that I have... Four trustees. Seven grandkids. Kind of funny how investing was easier when I didn't have any money. Titanium bikes are overrated. I always thought earning money was the hard part. Keeping it's the real job. Mm. I wonder, should we take the income? Should we reinvest? Thank you, Payne Weber. So, how's the food here? Great, Mom. Pizza every day. That's what I was afraid of. Oh, it's not what you had in college, Mom. It's Papa John's. But you need variety. Variety? That's Papa's choice. You get five toppings for $9.99. What about your veggies? Their veggies are great, especially the fresh baby portobello mushrooms. Order Papa's Choice, a large pizza with your choice of five toppings for a meager $9.99. I'm living better than I ever did at home. I wouldn't say that. I need a car. There's a whole new way to shop for a used car. No. A convertible. A red one. With under 15,000 miles. Introducing Autotrader.com. With a million and a half used cars updated daily, it's the biggest, best used car site on the planet. You couldn't help me with a loan, could you? Can we help you? Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. I'm always coming up with great new promotions for 7-Up. Like this one. I ask people to send me pictures of their cans. Let's take a look. Oh! <laughs> Look like two big Christmas hams. <laughs> it shows you can. Look at the backyard on this fella. <sighs> that about ends the uh, first annual 7-Up Show It's Your Can contest. Next time I'll be more specific. 
Mom? NCAA basketball presented by Payne Weber on ABC Sports. Brought to you by AutoTrader.com, the biggest, best used car site on the planet. And 7-Up in your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. Noise meter getting a workout here in the second half inside the pit in Albuquerque. A two-point lead for Utah in one of the toughest places to play in America, although it has not been the case this season. Seven losses so far for New Mexico. The last four years, New Mexico was 71 and three inside the pit. That is incredible. You know, we talked to Rick Majerus about that and why they've had success. Because Rick Majerus says we don't. It's a little bit about the myth. But he said the other side of it is we don't talk about where we play. We talk about the game and playing the game. It doesn't matter that way you play it. You just have to play it the right way. And I agree with him. I, I, frankly, I used to like to play on the road because everybody thought that you couldn't play there. And I figured, you know, the basket, same height, floor, same length. There is a certain mindset that it does take on the road, though, to win. And you've got to be a lot tougher. Tony Harvey off the screen, wide open jumper, short. High in the air is Marlon Palmer. He's got five got assists it, got on it. the afternoon and another one to Waylon White. And the foul. Waylon White running the floor and putting on a show. White's putting on the show, but the young freshman heads up on this play. He looks up and he finds White. His high school coach, that is, Palmer's high school coach, David Greenwood, the former UCLA star, would be very proud of that play. The shot he took before the timeout, he would have got after him for. <laughs> but so far, he's been heads up, finding the open man. It is 42 to 41, New Mexico. That's their first lead since they led 4 to 3 in the opening moments. You talk about playing on the road. It's equally important if you're the home team. Don't get caught in all the noise. You've got to stay controlled, stay poised here. R.T. Gwynn now in the lineup for Fran Fischella's club. Everyone standing inside the pit. Including the folks right in front of us. Harvey, the long three right in front of the Utah bench. Well, you can see he's got a stroke. That's great confidence in his shot. Tony Harvey, two out of five from beyond the arc. He's got ten points now for Utah. With, with Palmer back in the game, you can take Lamont uh, Long off the ball. It's Walker now inside the lane against Collins. Oh, oh. Contact up and in off the glass. How did he get it up on the glass to begin with? Terry, he attacked it. That was an attack play. Because he really knew he couldn't make that shot. He missed one. Now watch. And he just decides he's going to attack it. And if he's lucky enough to get his shoulder ahead of Cullen, because if he does it, that's an offensive foul. But he's been very aggressive going to the basket. The numbers on Damian Walker as he misses the free throw. Just threw the third foul on Phil Cullen. So Cullen with three, Nate Alltalk with three. He's still on the Utah bench. And no matter what. That's where, they, that's where they start to have trouble. Screen out top for Harvey. The switch, they get back. White now on Jensen inside. Adam Sharp is in the game. Jensen, a good look. Top of the key, short. Good tap out. Oh. And down is Phil Cullen. He is still on the ground, and he's injured. He made a good tap out, though. He came down awkward. I know Middleton knows what... That is about all too well. If you're talking about taking one for the team. And he came down in somewhat of a contorted position. So Rick Majerus down there kind of blocking our view a little bit. No, Phil Cullen caught an elbow. Looking at his facial area. Well, the reaction is actually pretty good. You see he's shaking his head. It's not, it's not like a delayed reaction. I don't know if he hit his head a little bit or what. Good to see him sitting up there. See if we can catch it and take another look. Well, he watched the play, man. 
Well, he actually, and he got his leg caught under him, too. So he had he, quite a few things going on there. And, you know, the thing about that when you, you haven't played a lot, sometimes you feel those things can be quite damaging. But here's a guy that's a pretty good athlete. I mean, he plays volleyball. He's a baseball player, got drafted by the Orioles. He pitched last year at the end of the season, of the basketball season. So, you know, he, he's been knocked around a couple of times. But they still need him on the floor. Hopefully he's healthy. Nate Altoff comes in for him and gets a bucket right away. And they ran the play for Altoff down low on the block. 12 points on the afternoon for the big guy. And a two-point lead now for Utah. Long to try to get him into some offense. A little pick and roll up high. Gets the screen from Walker. Gives it back. Walker going to work on Tony Harvey. A mismatch size-wise. And he draws the foul on Tony Harvey. Well, he decided he was going to take him and for whatever reason. And remember, we were watching with Rick Majerus today. They kept saying that's the way he wants to go. He wants to go left. And he told his guys that Harvey was the one guy that he didn't have get in that position to play him, to force him back to his right. You don't think that's what Rick is telling him right now, do you? I, I think that may be a, just a little bit of a reminder. If you get caught on him, force him back to his right. Well, if you're a fan and you ever do have the opportunity to go to a Utah practice, although most are not open, but... It is something to see. Rick Majera spending 99.9% .9 of the time teaching. But you and I have been fortunate enough to play for some, some really good coaches. I mean, he was telling his team, just in the scouting report, some things that a lot of players just don't get. I mean, you folks have to remember, two years ago, his team was in the final four in the championship game. They lose to Kentucky. Damian Walker with 13, and we're tied again with 12.35 and counting. Jensen with white on it. Here's Harvey. Good patience by Harvey on that one. He could have taken a shot. Adam Sharp pulls it back. Harvey a deep three, top of the key, off. On top the board, though, and draws the foul. That's why they needed him on the floor. I mean, it's clear his size is just too much to handle. If you don't block him out, you got a guy that big, Terry. You know, you got to block him out early. And don't worry about getting the rebound. Right there, Tony Harvey gets a look and comes up a little short, a little right, and you see Altov just take it, get it, and get fouled. New Mexico just does not have an answer for Altov inside. They're, they've had that problem, as we were talking a little while ago, with, when they played Wyoming, the inside got their inside game. They got a good perimeter game. They lost Kenny Thomas, who's now playing for the Houston Rockets. So they lose a very good inside player. Jump out on Long, the give to Walker, the spin against Altov. He gets it back and gets the bucket. Tie ball game again. Damian Walker going to work. Oh, he's, he's got a 15 now. And Utah will try to be patient on the offensive end again. They've used up much of the shot clock throughout the afternoon. Well, they've got a couple players they can go through. Jensen can back screen and get a shot, and Harvey can create one if he has to. Against White. Oh, what a pass. Altov. The fadeaway, not really the shot that Rick Majerus wants to see from Altov. And Marlon Palmer will bring it back. And run right in to Tony Harvey. That's a senior against a freshman. There's nowhere to go on that play which you got when you have the defense back. You've got to pull that one out and run a play. The bad shot a couple of minutes ago, and now the charge by Palmer. Other than that, he's been terrific this afternoon. We are tied in the pit. <laughs> Knowing this guy five minutes, he's already giving me investment advice. For a recommendation on your portfolio, please press three. I'm going to pay for this. What was I Should think? my 401k be all stuff? Should my 401k be all cash? Why didn't they write this last month? My portfolio should be overweighted in game companies. Got Why him. does this guy think what works for him? It's going to work for me. Thank you, Payne Weber. Michelin would like to remind you there's only one safety feature on the road that actually touches the road. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires.
car? A minivan. Mm, no. An SUV. <gasps> With leather. Blue. Green. Bluish green? Introducing Autotrader.com. With a million and a half used cars updated daily, it's the biggest, best used car site on the planet. Now we need insurance. And a loan. Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. You know, I've played in the U.S. and Canada, so I've got friends all over. That's why I use 1010220. It's only 99 cents up to 20 minutes and just 7 cents a minute after that within the U.S. or to Canada. So when I call my buddy Phelan here in the States or my brother in Canada, it's just 99 cents all day, every day. With 1010220, all your calls can be under a buck. Hey, little brother, go long. Falls for it every time. Hey! Hey! America's finest skaters in a one-of-a-kind ABC sports event. No rules, no judges, just skating. The Chevrolet Skating Spectacular, Sunday at 1 on ABC. Tie score here in the pit where it has not been a normal year at home for the Lobos. Fran Fraschella says very good reason for that. We've gotten beat at home by some good teams. Uh, I wish we'd played a little bit better at home, but the simple fact in this first year, Terry, we've tried to establish a mental toughness in our program, and I think that's borne out by how competitive we've been on the road, and, uh, and I think this first year is a, a, a year of process, of, of moving forward and building the kind of philosophy we want here, and so in many ways, I've been really pleased with the, uh, with the first year and the effort of our kids and the foundation we're building for the future. Fran Fraschella has brought a lot of East Coast energy to the pit. And you look at what they have done this season as opposed to the last four years. Tough to take over a program and coach kids that you, most of whom you did not recruit. No, because you've got to teach them the fundamentals of way, the way you coach the game. People coach it differently. But I think the other thing, their schedule has been a little tougher than it has in the past as well. Adam Sharp strong to the hole. It's clear by Walker there. Palmer pushes it to Long, down low to White. R.T. Grin, who's had a tough afternoon. Local kid, though, knocks one home from 15. And the Lobos with the lead. It is tough to win on the road, no matter the record. Utah coming in 19-4 and 8-1 and and in the Mountain West. The number one team in the conference. That's been the way it is almost in every conference. Getting world wins are just, just hard to do. Harvey, a switch on the screen back to Sharp. The steal, the quick hands by White, here he comes. And pulls it back out, didn't have the numbers. Well, it also, he didn't think he could get an angle because if he thought he could there, <laughs> he was ready to dunk that one. This place would have exploded. One-on-one, -on -one. Palmer's got Jensen, got mismatch, quickness-wise, wipe it off. The foul before the shot by Jensen. You know, Palmer's made a couple of mill errors, and you might expect that from a young player, but he's really been the thing that's held them together here in the second half. As you take a look at the Mountain West standings, with New Mexico, this would be a huge win for them, primarily because they get a win at home, but in the conference. But you can see it would help them tremendously as they look to try to get a postseason bid. Phil Cullen back in the injury a couple of minutes ago, so it's good to see him back in. Yeah, that matchup, too, between UNLV and New Mexico, or uh, Utah, excuse me, on Monday night is huge in terms of the conference race. In the Mountain West Tournament this season in Las Vegas, there is no automatic bid for the winner there. And I'd have to say, pretty safely, Utah's in. Yeah, their team that'll go. It's everybody else is trying to fight for a place within that. I mean, I looked at your, Rick Majerus' team, the conference. They won, like, the conference tournament, the conference. It, with the exception of, like, 90, 92, and 94, they pretty much have won it. So he's done a very good job. Raylan White, a well-deserved break. Roland Hanna. And for Fran Fraschella right now. Hannah's Al got to get on the glass. Altoff posting up, draws the foul and the bucket. Damian Walker has been caught down there all afternoon long. He, he can't, he's 6'7", he's just not big enough. And what you talked about is you can't let Altoff get that kind of position. You see that one of the biggest cheerleaders, and I mean biggest cheerleaders <laughs> you'll see, is Hannah. 
you know, Rick was talking about it. It's interesting having Adam Mandela on the bench because he'll come up to him and say, hey, coach, let's go to the box and reverse the ball out of that and see what we get. And Rick says he likes being challenged like that. He's got another assistant coach, and you don't have to pay him. 17 now for Nate Altar and the one-point lead for Utah. And Lamont Long has really not been much of a factor. Eight points in the game. Had a change of shot off the glass. So, what a shot. so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> on cue. Oh, that's a foul. I, I just cannot understand that one. Hannah just grabbed Cullen going to the away from the basket. They get it to Long where he can turn the corner. See, Althoff really can't get to him. Killian tries to get back, and then all of a sudden he forces Long to readjust the shot, which is what you want to have happen. Lamont Long finally on the board here in the second half. Had a terrific game against BYU Thursday night. 19 of his 28 points coming in the first half. And 12 rebounds in that game, too, and Harvey just was whistled for a traveling violation. In a little bit of a hurry, and Rick Majera said, just kind of put his hands down, slow down. You got to be quick without hurrying in this game. Yeah, you sure do. You can make the move, but you got to make it where you're under control. Utah with 13 turnovers in the game. They had 10 at halftime. A lot of contact with Altoff and Long. The switch back to Killian. Walker draws the foul. Nate Altoff. Just as Walker cannot stay with him on the block at the other end, he cannot stay with Damian Walker on the perimeter. Well, I think it's a pretty good thing, you know, not for Nate Althoff, but for Walker to recognize that. And, you know, some guys have an advantage, and they don't recognize it. At least he tried to get to the basket. He's right there, Althoff, I don't know why he's going out there. All he needs to do is what you call level off, which is put your shoulders square between the basket and your man and play. Yeah, that's an intelligent move by Damian Walker. There's no question. He knew Altoff had the three fouls. So now, Altoff, who has 17 points in the game, is going to have to take a seat on the bench with 849. The other thing that they've got working pretty positively for them is Walker can get fouled, but he's an 81% foul shooter, so he can make those, and you don't have to run a lot of offense to him. Second leading field goal and free throw shooter in the conference. The biggest lead of the afternoon for New Mexico. 54 to 51 at under nine minutes. Could there be an upset in the pit this afternoon? Cullen. Palmer stripped him initially and they're going to keep it at this end. Two. Damian Walker, 13 points in the second half. And 17 overall. Jensen with White on it. Trying to swing it side to side. Well, they're trying to get Jensen free. Cohen, a long three over the backboard, and it's Lobo basketball. Lobo's actually played pretty good defense, because they ran Jensen from one corner across three picks to the other to get him open, and then back, and he never touched the ball. Like running through a forest to try to guard a guy. <laughs> With, with some branches when you catch an elbow or two. Brian Smith, the 6'8 junior from Tucson, now in the ball game for New Mexico. Long's got another one. The long range three for Lamont Long, and it's a six point game. Important possession for Utah now. But they need to get a hoop or get to the foul line. Cullen, the quick shot, no. Johnson keeps it alive, back out, they get a fresh shot clock. Jeff Johnson on the move, pulls up for three. Cullen over the back, they'll whistle that one. The atmosphere in the pit has changed dramatically in the last five minutes. The run by New Mexico, and it's like the pit of old days. They're pretty pleased with it. Well, they should be. The fourth foul on Phil Cullen. So he's got four. Altoff has got four. And without Menela, the number's dwindling on the bench for Rick Majerus. And if you're 
just take a look at the team. It's a much smaller team that's on the floor now. I mean, you got two guys six seven, six eight, but you don't have Alcoff that's six eleven. And you got guards out there six about six four, six three, hardly six five. Eighteen on the afternoon for Damian Walker. Make it 19 in New Mexico on a 15 to 4 run in the last five minutes and 30 seconds. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. I need a car. There's a whole new way to shop for a used car. No, a convertible, a red one with under 15,000 miles. Introducing Autotrader.com. With a million and a half used cars updated daily, it's the biggest, best used car site on the planet. You couldn't help me with a loan, could you? Can we help you? Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. Pep Boys knows how to give you a great deal on tires. They don't run specials on just one size. Pep Boys discounts every size in stock. That means all 35,000 mile tires are four for $99. And all 70,000-mile tires are four for only $169. Even top-of-the-line 80,000-mile touring tires, all sizes four for $199. Call it a bonanza, an extravaganza. It's how you save on tires. Pep Boys. Cars like us. People love us. R.C. Willie now brings you our most popular mattress sale of the year, R.C. Willie's Top 10. Get a free bed frame, box springs, premium mattress, fitted sheet, top sheet, two deluxe pillows, two pillowcases, free five-year extended warranty, and free setup and removal of your old mattress. All this, any size, any model of mattress set on sale for $4.99 or above. Choose from Simmons, Sealy, or Spring Air, and with any purchase, take home a cherry or apple pie free. Saturday and Monday, come in for a slice of free pie and ice cream. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Nobody. Seven days a week, every day of the year. Count on the Home Depot for the guaranteed low price on over 50,000 home improvement items. And even if you do find a lower price, we won't just meet it, we'll beat it. By 10% every day. Because at the Home Depot, we're committed to giving you the lowest price possible. No mail-in rebates, no gimmicks, no hassles. The Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Good morning, Utah. Weekday mornings at 5.30 on 4 Utah. ABC's NCAA basketball presented by Payne Weber and a great one going on here in the pit. Could number 20 go down today? An eight-point lead for New Mexico as we look at our Bex storyline so far, Clint. Well, you can see offensive rebounds. Utah 11 to 4. Jensen having a pretty good game, 14, 13. But you can take a look. White and Long had 30 points on 11 of 16, 71%, 10 of 14. Incredible shooting by New Mexico. And Utah shooting only 39% in the second half. Damian Walker, 19 points on the afternoon. Six boards and some big buckets here in the second half. His career high, by the way, 25. He had that earlier this season against Air Force. Jensen. Out of the timeout, set up by Rick Majerus and Alex Jensen, the star answers. Did a good job. They ran it. They wanted to get Jensen at that angle. You could tell the way they started the ball. They wanted to get back to this left side. Jensen with 16 this afternoon. Five-point game. Lamont Long, who has certainly heated up in the second half. Walker lost it over Pusey. The 10-footer and good. And feeling it. 17 in the second half alone with Damian Walker. Killian guarded by Carmen. Tony Hardy. They need all top and he get, just got off the bench. They've got to get all top in the game because they've got to get some size to get some easy baskets. Jeff Johnson, a wide open look from three. No. Here comes Lamont Moore. The hesitation, the spin, and the kiss off the glass. You can see he's a creative scorer. Seven in the second half, he's got 15 in the game, and Rick Majerus wants to talk it over. The nine-point lead for New Mexico when they trailed much of the game.
Walker's been playing good. He allowed Lamont Long to kind of stay dormant a little bit. Now, Long is warming up. You see right there, he takes it in the Killian, taps it right off the glass, doing a good job. He's also knocked down a couple jump shots. So he's starting to heat up, trying to carry his team at his last 621. Well, coming into the year, everyone knew Lamont Long would be the star, including Fran Fraschello. We asked him about his star earlier today. The thing I've admired about him lately as he's played his best basketball, best basketball of the season is that he's played with a lot of emotion. And uh, maybe I've rubbed off on him a little bit. And he's probably rubbed off on me because I've calmed down, you know, since I've come back to coaching. So he's been a delight to coach because uh, uh, when your best player is your hardest worker, which I think he is, it makes everybody else fall in line. He's a quiet leader. He doesn't say a lot. But on the court, when he's on, he's a very, very effective player. If Fran Fraschella has calmed down, <laughs> just imagine what he was like at St. John's in Manhattan. Well, it, it's it, Fran Fraschella right now just trying to calm it down for his team because right here, Marlon Par Parman just picked up a foul, and I believe it's his fourth. That's his fourth. So, and he doesn't want to come out of the game, but Fran, I think Fran Fraschella is making the right move. He got six minutes to go, and he couldn't get him out of the game. Palmer was yelling at his coach, no, I want to stay in, but Kevin Henry set to check in. But it's hard with a freshman. Yeah. It really is, because they just don't know exactly how to stay out of the way. Here's Altoff back in the game. Doesn't even draw a rim over Brian Smith. And they walk it up, slow the tempo. But you cannot all of a sudden just, just try to hold the lead. You've got to play aggressively. This is You've got five minutes. It's way too early to try to hold the lead. It's a delicate balancing act, isn't it? It really is. And a 10 or 12 point lead, or even though it's eight, is one of the toughest to try to maintain. Walker gives it up. Tough pass to handle, but White kicks it back out. Six on the shot clock. Palmer's got to get it to go. He's got to throw it up. Yes! Marlon Palmer. It's been that kind of a day for Palmer and that kind of a half for New Mexico. Time out, Utah. They play in the game against BYU, and when they started to get themselves in trouble in that game, Palmer did the same thing, but he went to the right. Pulls up, takes a tough shot. You can see they try to stay out of his way, but he makes a big three, shows some emotion with it. The young freshman stepping up to make some shots here. Altoff is in trouble, and he knows it because he can't foul. So he goes right around him, and then Harvey comes and just tries to avoid him, and Palmer's fortunate enough to put it down. You saw the shot clock, 0.5 on the clock as he let it go. The first half, the battle of the boards, dominated by Utah, but look at what New Mexico has done in the second half, 13-7. Well, they've been able to get to a lot of that because Altoff has had to be off the floor, and fans for Schiller and the Lobos have taken advantage of that with their quickness. And they're going up against a great rebounding team. Remember, the Utes, 42 straight conference games where they have come out on top in terms of that battle of the boards. Both teams, two timeouts left as we hit the five-minute mark. And the defense has picked up considerably in the second half for New Mexico. Tony Harvey, an important shot from three-point range, though. <laughs> and how calm was he? He almost lost the ball. His third three-pointer day, he's got 13. So the lead down to nine. Long with Killian, the help by Jensen. He got the block from behind. Harvey on the run. I thought it was a pretty good no call because it looked to me like Jensen got the top of the ball because Long brought it down. Johnson thought about it. Drives to the hole, loses it, gets it back for a moment to scramble. And it's logo basketball. Lamont Long comes out of the rugby scrum with it. <laughs> he's going to tie his shoelace now. Well, he's got those ankle braces on. You, gotta get this, you better hurry up get across. He, he just got the ball across for the 10-second violation. I mean, it was 26. And the 22nd timeout now taken by Fran Fraschella. So they'll talk about it and catch their breath, along with everyone else in this arena right now. 4.03 left in this Mountain West showdown. Well, next Saturday, the top 64 ranked golfers in the world competing in a dramatic single elimination tournament. Tiger Woods will be there. 
Sergio Garcia, David Duvall, Ernie Els. Some of the names that will be competing in the World Golf Championships. Anderson Consulting Match Play Championship next Saturday at 2 Eastern and Pacific right here on ABC. And what a shock to see Tiger Woods' name on top of the World Golf Rankings, huh? Have you seen the guy? I mean, with, he's got touch. He's got length. Started to control his shots, and particularly with his short irons, and lace it up there and, and touch the ball. I mean, he's got it all. Six in a row. That's just incredible when you think about the depth of the PGA Tour today. It really is incredible. 72 percent for the Lobos in the second half. Well, they have a nine-point lead. White wide open. Harvey the rebound. Got a good look. That's all you can really try to get. Because they're going to keep long from getting. 340 and counting now as Rick Majerus is up directing traffic. Alex Jensen, you got to believe he's going to touch the ball a lot in his next three minutes. They got to get out of Harvey. Tony Harvey, he can hit that. Yeah, you got to get out of Harvey. You can't let him size it up. His fourth three pointer of the afternoon. It's a six point lead now for. New Mexico. All talk on the switch. Did a good job forcing Long back. Here's that matchup now. Walker, who has taken all talk, decides not to this time. He couldn't get to his left because Long is in the left corner. Jensen on the switch out. Palmer trying to take him to the glass. No. Rebound Johnson. Good defense from Alex Jensen. Good, good job, no, not fouling. Palmer likes to go to his left as well. It's getting to be that time with two minutes and 35 seconds left in the game. Every possession by gold now. Killian off the screen. Long. Johnson a big rebound. But throws it away. Altoff wasn't ready for it. Well, he was in the middle and he was fighting Brian Smith. So he was off balance and really couldn't catch it. And Palmer's got to hurry again. <laughs> he's, he's been a little too conservative, trying to slow it down a little bit, Terry. Just beating the 10 seconds by one second for the second straight time. It is going to be one of those, I'm not coming to get you. Shot clock at 10, Quinn. You got to take it to the basket. There goes White doing just that. That's offensive. Overall top and they'll go the other way. Waylon White out of control. He was just trying to dunk it no matter who was there. Yeah, he really had made up his mind because if he looked, Brian Smith was open on the other side. A minute 53. They're going to talk it over. The number 20 team of the nation down by six. Dad wouldn't have called this retirement. I mean, who would have thought? When do I get to retire from managing my money? Now that I have no trustees, seven grandkids. Kind of funny how investing was easier when I didn't have any money. Titanium bikes are overrated. I always thought earning money was the hard part. Keeping it's the real job. Mm. I wonder, should we take the income? Should we reinvest? Thank you, Payne Weber. Autobytel.com for dealer cost info, reviews, and a low, no haggle price. It's a hassle free trip. Autobytel.com, the road to your next car. Just when Rudy Duncan was ready to start over, I've been dreaming about that smile. Hey, sis. They forced him back into their world. We're taking down that casino, and you're the guy that's going to tell us how. On February 25th... You gotta find a way to give me a gun. Something tells me you're not being totally honest with me. The games begin. Let's play! Reindeer Games. Game's over. Not yet. Rated R. Starts Friday in theaters everywhere.
NCAA basketball presented by Payne Weber on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Payne Weber. Thank you, Payne Weber. And Bex, a beer apart. New Mexico trying to complete an upset here at home. The six-point lead over number 20. Take you back to the last possession. Rick Majerus, the nice athletic stance, but he is <laughs> way out on the court, Quinn. Well, that's what the complaint was by Fran Fischiller, that Rick Majerus is way too far out on the court, and he tried to say something to the officials, and the officials, they're trying to tell him now that he has no business out on the court. I would imagine the officials would say something, but Rick has done that all the time. You can see how emotional Fran Fischiller is getting or had gotten about that particular incident. And in most of the time, the officials will say to a coach, hey, watch it here, you get out on the court, we're gonna call it the next time down. And I think that's what they'll do uh, this time. Yep. Jensen, 4-3, in and out. All tall fights for the rebound. Long comes up with it, but they're gonna call a foul. And it will be all tall going to the free throw line. Altalk has, Altalk has been really tough for them to handle. You know what that was? That's a pick and roll. And the guy got on the up wrong side, Altalk, and he was able to get position. The fourth foul on Waylon White. Yeah, like Utah it? now trying to get points when the clock does not run. You've got a big fella that can shoot it. He's 78% from the line. Not this time, though, and White clears the board. A two-possession game. New Mexico trying to make it more. You see what they're doing? They're putting it in the hands of Lamont Long. The freshman Palmer is in the game, but it is Long running the point right now. And what they'll try to do is keep him from getting the ball. White draws the foul on Jeff Johnson. And while we have a moment, this week's Payne Weber Senior of the Week, Stanford's Mark Matson. You know what he's done on the court. He selected for his contributions both on and off the court. A Pac-10 academic, all-academic man, and a 3.2 grade point average in economics. Payne Weber will donate $1,000 to the Senior of the Week Scholarship Fund in the name of Cardinal Senior Mark Mad Dog. That's it. As Waylon White makes it a seven-point lead now. Only a 43% free throw shooter coming in. Well, he's probably in one of those got, got good vibes going, you know what I mean? Because he started out good. So he's in one of those kind of modes, you know, he's just hanging in there, but I agree with you. Doesn't shoot it well, but we'll see. Oh, these are some friendly fans. 19 on the afternoon for White. And from the time he let it go, it had a chance. An eight-point lead now as Utah has to hurry just a little bit. Harvey launches a three. He's got another one. And they'll take a timeout. I tell you, Harvey's a guy that can shoot it with range. I watched him shoot it. And he's very comfortable being out right around the NBA three-point line, on that line, knocking down shots. Well, he's kept him in the game, Quinn. He's got five three-pointers now in the afternoon. And 19 points. Now, what they do is you take a look at the timeout situation. They run pick and roll with he and Jensen. Watch, that's Jensen. So you can't come off Jensen either. So if you stay back too far, and you can see at that point, Lamont Long got to him, but Harvey's just very confident player. Just a good read coming off that screen as well for Tony Harvey, who has 14 points in the second half alone. He shouldered much of the scoring burden. You look at the situation right now. Both teams with a timeout left. New Mexico will be in the double bonus. 106 and a five-point lead for Frank Fischilla's club. Don't forget, coming your way over on ESPN, Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Monday evening, 7 o'clock to start, number 18, UConn, and St. John's, Oklahoma, and Missouri. And the big one out of the Mountain West, UNLV and Utah at the Huntsman Center, and that could be for the conference championship. Brad Priscilla's old team, St. John's, pretty good ball club. Under a minute now. And White, a man they would want to foul, even though he just got down a couple. Shot clock with 12. Palmer, the drive. We don't know where the shot clock is. Six on the shot clock now. He's got to launch one now. Got it. And he got another one. A huge shot for Marlon Palmer and a seven-point lead with 30 seconds left. 
Harvey from 25. The rebound to White and the foul. And his crowd senses the upset. For the second time this afternoon, hits a huge shot as the shot clock runs out. His numbers don't tell the story. He went three for six with seven points, but he has made some big, big plays. He's made big plays. He's got big assists. This is the double bonus for him, so that's obviously pretty good. But, but that's, we were talking it before the half. That's what the difference was having him on the floor. He had those two fouls in the first half. He couldn't be on the floor. Kevin Henry will come in right now for Brian Smith. New Mexico pulled off the upset earlier this season at Arizona when they were ranked second in the country. Utah comes in as number 20. White with the miss, still a seven-point game. You got to push it up with your Harvey. Good play by Long. Don't go chase it now. The stand position. Killian to the bucket. They'll let him go with 11.7 left. And they got a foul right away. They get Lamont Long, though. An 81% free throw shooter. And New Mexico up by five. You can see the frantic face on Fran Priscilla. And Rick Majerus has got to calm down a little bit. Struggling here to beat it number two Arizona at the time. Long rattles at home. I mean, if there ever was a team victory, Terry, this is one. I mean, they had a little bit of everybody good. Long came alive for a while. Another Walker got it going for them. Palmer has been solid, and White got him started. Lamont Long with 17 on the afternoon. Raylan White has 19 and Damian Walker 21. They've spread the wealth today at the pit. Timeout New Mexico. They set up the defense and Frank Fischel will say those three magic words. Do not follow. <laughs> Utah with the loss in these last 10.8 seconds would move to 8-2. UNLV has already defeated the U's. They're at 7 and 2. That's why that game Monday night on ESPN is so big. Yeah, and I think it's bigger for UNLV than it is for Utah. I really do, because right now we're looking at consideration for the NCAA tournament. So UNLV needs to beat them because there's no automatic bid for the Mountain West this year. Because it's a, it's a new conference, but you can see the remaining schedule there for Rick Majerus and the U's. Wyoming has already gotten a win today. So here we go. The last seconds of this game as Killian misses the three. Walker with the rebound. What an afternoon here in the pit. The upset by the New Mexico Lobos. Fran Fraschella with a huge win at home.
because if they can